Good morning, everybody. My name is Abby DeVere, and I just wanted to introduce myself. I am an art teacher in Southern Indiana, and I am here today to finish part two and part three of our abstract painting series for children and for beginners. So I hope you'll join me today. Uh, we started yesterday by making this uh, painting, as you can see, with lots of colors cool colors and today we're going to add our warm colors into that painting. Uh, the third part will be adding some blacks for intensity to really pop our work and then removing the tape to see our finished product. So I hope you'll join me. Uh, you need to go ahead and get your supplies for this video. You are going to need your warm colors. So the colors that you choose doesn't have to be all of them but it can be the ones that you like from yellow, orange, and red. Your paint brushes and water and a paper towel or paint rag to wipe your brush. And of course your artwork you made yesterday. So I hope you'll join me from your studio into my studio for part two. See you in just a second. Okay, we are back. Just thought I would take a moment between to get my handy dandy cup of coffee and my beautiful mug. I don't know if you can see that. I don't want to tip it. It's from Alawine Pottery. It's beautiful. I love it. I love drinking coffee while working. Now, kids, you shouldn't be drinking coffee. At least not yet. But grown-ups know. Coffee makes the world go round. Okay, so I went ahead and got our palette ready here. We have some red and orange and yellow, and I actually went ahead and put some white because the, we will leave some of the elements white, and I wanted to go ahead and put a surface of paint on there just so that there's continuity um, that all looks the same on our picture. So what we're gonna do is add in some of these colors, our warm colors. I probably will end up using my round brush a lot today just because the spaces we have are kind of small. We'll have to see how it goes. I really don't know. We'll have to see. Now, also, when you use yellow, especially if you're painting over something else, you would need to mix it with some white to give it a little extra body because if you put yellow on top of this, it turns green. So be aware of that. If you're using yellow, make sure, you know, some paints are really high quality and they'll, the opacity is good, meaning it doesn't show through like a watercolor. But this particular paint is pretty uh, economy kind of paint. So um, I probably will have to add a little bit. If we're doing it right on the paper, it should be fine. But if we're doing it on top of something else, we might need to mix white in. Okay, so here we go. Let's get... To business. I'm gonna get my brush softened up a little bit. Pardon my sniffles. I have a little bit of an allergy situation going on today. Um, let's see. Let's start with red. I have no idea. I haven't pre-planned this at all. So when we're picking where we're gonna put our colors, if we want our work to be really dynamic, then we need to put colors that are across from each other on the color wheel. So I have red, and red is across from green. So I'm thinking I might do a little section of red right here. And put it right in there next to it. But you can pick however you want to do yours, okay? But I'm going to try not to overthink this. I'm famous for that. Mary likes to tease me that I... I'm long-winded and I am too detailed sometimes. But I don't know what to tell you. I am what I am. So there we go. And I have some sort of a little fuzzy on there. Okay, so I'm going to let that set for a minute. I don't, I know that I want to probably put another coat on that red because it's pretty streaky. Um, so let's think about it in, in composition or the, how you organize your work. You've got to have some hidden um, ways of doing things. So I like to think of the triangle or the three, three points of color. So I'm looking at this one and I'm thinking this here would be really pretty. 
I don't know what. I keep getting little things on my paintbrush. And I'm just going to fill this in here. Nice. And then I want a third part of that triangle. So I could do it here or I could do it down here or here. I think for this painting, I might pick here. I went over a little bit on my green. It's okay. I'm going to turn my work. I'm sorry if that makes anybody dizzy. I tend to turn my work a lot. I There's a lot of things I've learned about myself as an artist that I didn't really realize until I was making videos. But see how those three red places really um, make your eye move and you're interested in all of those points, okay? So the question is, um, I think I'm going to stop with red for right now because I think that's pretty good. And I might hit some orange places. Now, does anybody know, maybe your kids can tell you if they're in my class, what the opposite color of blue is on the color wheel? If you answered orange, you are correct. So this may take a couple of coats, okay? Because I'm going to put it actually on this dry section right here. And it will read a little bit muddy at first. So I'm just going to do a swoosh like a C and I'm going to let that dry. And then I'm going to come back to it and darken it in. I'm going to let it dry though. Okay. Not sure how I feel about that, but we shall see. All right, so maybe we've got that there, and maybe we want to put a little bit of that orange in this white spot. You can see the difference in the quality, the brightness of those colors when they're just on white versus when they're on another color. Pretty intense when they're in their perfect state. Okay, and I'm going to clean that up. I'm actually going to clean up this part that I got on here. Let me see if I can find a brush to do that. I'm going to use a little tiny brush. You probably won't make that mistake. But for this work, I actually kind of like um, to keep it neat. I don't know. Maybe it's just a personal preference. Okay. Let's turn our work and take a look at it. Uh, orange, orange. Maybe we we'll want to do the other orange up here. And, you know, if you want to mix color that's a little bit different than straight out of the bottle, it's really okay to do that. But I don't recommend doing it on the surface of the canvas. I re recommend doing in your palette, mixing up uh, the color that you're happy with. You can always mix colors. But for this exercise, it's really good for kids to use colors in their natural hue because it teaches them about color theory. And it's a little easier to see. Okay. So that's why I suggested that. But it's not like all the time. You don't have to be like that all the time. I tend to be a lot more haphazard when I'm doing my own work. Um, just because I'm pretty committed to the, the media. I just kind of see what the media is going to do uh, on my paper. So I'm okay with that. So I've got three spots of orange. Now you don't have to do threes. I just think it's a good way to learn how to organize space. Now, this is where it's going to get a little bit tricky. So we have this spot, which is all yellow, will be all yellow, and it's white right now. So I think I can just hit this with that yellow and it should be okay. But if I put yellow on top of something else, I might want to change. the way that, um, that I do it. I might add white to it. Okay. And I'm going to hit this little spot up here with yellow. And maybe this one down here. And I may, I don't know. I can't decide if I want to put that black or leave it white. I think I might leave that one white. 
and then uh, maybe I might put black in this one okay so there'll be one white spot so now what I'm gonna do is maybe add some white spots on top of parts that are dry just to add some interest and focal points so if I know that this is going to be black and this is going to be white I might try to create some sort of white elements here and here so we'll see let's get some white on our brush Let's see what we can do. Uh, we do have these green dots. We could do a white circle inside of them. And I think that sort of brings more attention to the light green opposite the dark green. Do you see how that really pops? It's kind of cool. All right, and then maybe we just want to have, let me look at this, arc goes that way, so maybe let's just put a simple square of white on top of this really dry blue. You could use your flat brush, it might be better. I just happen to have this brush and I'm gonna turn my work just a little bit nice okay and then I think I'm gonna rinse my brush out and I'm gonna get a little tiny brush and use the end I really like polka dots so I might put several polka dots I'm gonna use the end of my brush right here to make some dots it's kind of a fun way to be uniform and you'll have to kind of redip every time you go to do it so I'm gonna actually add some focal points inside of this blue section pardon me while I turn my work I'm gonna put a white polka dot inside those this is starting to get exciting here and I might come over here and maybe I'm gonna do uh, three dots opposite of those green dots there and maybe I want to put three dots up here on the screen that are white and as you can see this really starts to bring an energy to our work that wasn't there just a few minutes ago okay um, and I'll go ahead and I'll paint white in this section here because we're we decided we're gonna keep that white so I'm gonna go ahead and do that you know remember you don't have to do yours exactly like mine yours is going to be different and that is good that is actually wonderful. I do do not uh, expect that people are going to do things exactly like I do. I am very happy when people change um, change the plan and do things in a way that's good for them. All right, now I'm looking at this. We've got a white here. This will be black, so that'll be a really dark spot. And just trying to decide if I want to put any more white dots, or maybe we want to do dots and a color. That might be kind of fun. We can play with colors that are opposite on the color wheel. Um, although I wish I had still had my cool colors out. I'm going to use the warm colors to do this. So I might get red and maybe do some some red things. I'm going to leave it right next to there. I'm going to leave that you know, maybe we'll do it on both both sides at the same time. That's actually kind of cool like little buttons. I actually like that. I pushed a little hard on those two. Okay, and we might need some red dots. Up here somewhere. Wow, that's really cool. All right, and let's see. Is there any place that we could put some yellow or orange? Probably. Let's see what we can get into. So we don't have purple on here, which is the opposite color of yellow on the color wheel, because I thought actually that was purple, but it I poured it in a dark place and I couldn't. I didn't really see that it was actually blue. 
But that's okay. It's all good. I don't want to go too crazy with these polka dots, but it's kind of fun. I always used polka dots a lot, even in high school when I was an artist. I used little orbs, little orbs in everything that I did. So let's do a counterpart yellow on all those. And I feel like we're pretty pretty good for right now. I think I'm happy with that. Um, and then we'll go on to the next step here in a few minutes with our black. We're gonna let this dry. And when it's dry, we're gonna come back and do our blacks and finish up our finishing touches and call it a work. I'm super excited. It's starting to get exciting for me. I hope you're having a good time and I'll see you on the next video, video three for your finishing. Don't forget, create every day. Bye everybody.